Hello everybody. I am so happy you chose to join us again today. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come asking that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive you afresh. Father, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are, of course, on article number uh, 12, the harmony of the law and the gospel. Our author writes, we believe that the law of God is the eternal and unchangeable rule of his moral government that it is holy, just, and good, and that the inability which the scripture ascribes to fallen men to fulfill its precepts arises entirely from their love of sin, to deliver them from which and to restore them through a mediator to unfeigned obedience to the holy law is one great end of the gospel and of the means of grace connected with the establishment of the visible church. And so we are jumping uh, back in with our verses from the seventh chapter of Romans. I hope that you found the time to read and possibly even reread the entire chapter. Again this week we will be re we will read all verses from the NIV unless otherwise stated. So verses 7, 12, 14 and 22 of the 7th chapter of Romans. Starting with the 7th verse. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. Indeed, I would not have known what sin was except through the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, do not covet. So then, verse 12, the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. Verse 14, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual sold as a slave to sin. And finally, verse 22, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. So <clears throat> there is an a excellent book that I read a few months back called Cast. And it was written by Isabel Wickerson. In fact, the book was so good that not only did I read it, but Henry, my husband, and, and two men children also read it. The book opens with an event that happened in 2016 in the Siberian tundra, which belongs to Russia. That summer of 2016, had a heat wave that the area was not accustomed to. The heat produced wildfires which thawed the soil beneath the ground that normally remain frozen because this is a frozen area. <clears throat> the, her the children and the herdsmen on the land became sick a and some even died and from some mysterious illness that many had not seen in their lifetime. And so Russian authorities declared a state of emergency and began airlifting hundreds to the nearest hospital. And so scientists got involved and, and they later identified what had afflicted the Siberian settlement. Turns out that heat that was abnormal for that region had gone deep into the Russian permafrost. A permafrost is a permanently frozen layer on or under the earth's surface. But the heat exposed a toxin that had been covered up 
under that frozen surface of ground since 1941, which was the last war or World War II. Back then, in 1941, the pathogen anthrax had killed herds of reindeer that had laid hidden in the animal carcasses. And the animals back in 1941 had been buried in the permafrost. And so during that summer of extreme heat, the carcasses thawed and rose to the surface. And the pathogen anthrax, I, I, I'm sure most people have heard of anthrax when we had the an, an, anthrax problem. But the the pathogen anthrax had been dormant since 1941. And it because of the heat, it awakened intact and as powerful as it had ever been. It, it seeped into the grazing land and infected the reindeer of, tw of 2016. And it spread to the herders and who raised them and relied on them. Now, I know you're saying like, okay, what's that got to do with anything? But I thought that to be a great analysis of what Paul is explaining in the seventh chapter of Romans verses as well especially the the verses 7 through 11. so my thoughts were in case you have been missing my attempt to explain chapter 7 i'm in this lesson i'm i'm making another attempt to drive home what paul is saying Verses 7 through 12 of the 7th chapter of Romans says, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. Indeed, I would not have known what sin was except through the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, Do not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of covetous desire. For apart from the law, sin is dead. Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me, and through the commandment put me to death. So Paul is describing something that we all go through. As children, most of us lived a sheltered life, some more than others. And the same, I would think, would be the case with Paul. He was brought up to be the typical Jewish kid, being taught the law, probably even in, in, in his mother's womb. The law was just that important in the Jewish households. Paul, like many of us as children, were, was, we were sheltered and protected as much as possible. He and us were kept from being exposed to serious temptation, to serious evil things. Back when most of us was growing up, there was never an occasion when just watching TV, you could be exposed to the temptations of today. I mean, you know, we watch stuff like shows like Leave it to Beaver or Dennis the Menace or I Love Lucy and, and stuff like that. You know, you had your chores. Uh, you had rules that if you disobeyed, your parents had no problem not sparing the rod. Our parents wouldn't allow us to hang around, quote, bad kids. 
My point is that we were sheltered and the friends we hung around were also sheltered. Now, I'm not saying that we weren't mischievous and that we didn't uh, do stuff that got us into trouble. But for the most part, we grew up with a certain freedom from exposure to certain kinds of sin. We were carefree and for the most part didn't fall into like a lot of evil things. You know, we did mischievous things. Um, and I know, you know, sin is sin. I do know that. Uh, but what I'm saying is that a lot of things that uh, grown-ups knew about, we didn't know about. We, we were protected. We were sheltered from grown-up things. And, and so we pretty much grew up thinking that we are smarter than the average bear and that life was like a fairy tale, always with a happy ending. Paul says, in verse 9, he says, once I lived apart from the law. He knew the law. And like us, he, you know, or some of us, we were raised in the church. Uh, we may have gone to Sunday school. We may have, have known some Bible stories and may have even learned some scripture. But they were just words, just stuff in the good book. We learned stories and scriptures, but we didn't understand them. They were just stories and scriptures out of the Bible. Then we grew up and was exposed to more outside of our protective circle. We, are ex we were exposed to a different lifestyle, a different crowd of people. A different way of thinking you know most of the time when we grow up you know we may go off to school or go off to a in a different direction and sometimes our friends change and and and, and as we grow up our boundaries are removed and as always life happens all those things that you just heard about that was bad to do uh you saw these things up front and personal they became real and, and our new crowd the friends that we started hanging around with they say it's not bad it's fun and so for the first time we are faced with the sin that is in me the sin that is in us Sin, like that anthrax that had been laying dormant for 75 years, it just needs the right circumstances, the right opportunities to come together. All it needs is, is for everything to come together, the plan to come together. And when it does, it will awaken in us tensions that we had not felt before. Then, for the first time, we feel the restraint of the law. We, we feel that pull and tug, that do I, don't I, which is, you know, we, we feel the, the, all the thou shall nots that our crowd is saying, let's do it and let's keep doing it. All the while, we are experiencing this tension, this thing that, that's telling us, no, this is not what you ought to do. It, it, but it's something about the sinful situation that arouses in us a strong desire to do the very things that we have been taught not to do. Now, we may resist for a while, but then the pressure comes not from the outside, 
but from the inside and the pressure to want to badly do these forbidden things that we have been taught not to do we may have been, we may have grown up being taught to know right from wrong but had never had an understanding we never uh we never experienced it we never experienced just what it meant until we went through certain experiences ourselves we are told don't and we were told rather don't and since the opportunity nor the experience was there it wasn't a problem paul gives us an example of one such experiences for him he, he says in verse 7 and 8 for i would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said do not covet but sin Seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment produced in me every kind of covetous desire. For apart from law, sin is dead. Paul thought that he had been keeping all the law because he was busy doing or not doing some external things that the law said do or not do but do not covet is an inside thing it's an inside job it messes with my insides it messes with my desires my feelings my ambitions to covet is to want to desire what another person has it says thou shall not desire what another has verse 8 says but sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment produced in me every kind of covetous desires like that anthrax situation paul says he was awakened to every kind of covetous desire it's not that it hadn't been there all the time. It's just the opportunity and the desire had not come together at the right time. Like that anthrax, sin lies silent within us. We don't know, we don't even know it's there. We think we got it all together. We think we can handle whatever comes our way. We've got all this self-confidence when the reality is that we really have never, we've never really been exposed to a situation that really puts pressure on us while wrestling with the thou shall not of the law. We've never been, when we think we got it all together, it's because we have not been exposed to situations that causes that tension within us and, and so but when it happens all kinds of desires are awakened in us that we didn't know were there and, and the thing is that one desire will awaken other desires that continue to awaken other desires for instance coveting can lead to cheating which can lead to stealing, which can lead to lying, which can lead to robbery. And we can just go on and on and on. Sin doesn't just come in and just affect one little area. It spreads. It's kind of like the anthrax situation. It's, it, 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 it awakened uh, or was thawed and, and, and it came to life inside of the dead uh reindeer but then it starts spreading it, it spread to the live reindeers of 2016 and then to the people to the children it just started going spreading just like sin does when that beast called sin is awakened 
we discover things in us that we had no idea was there. Sin will make you do some things that you didn't think you would do. Sin will make you go farther than you intended to go, and it will keep you there longer than you want to stay. Sin is just like that. It, 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 it won't turn you loose. Paul makes a resolve in verse 12 and 13. He says, so then. The law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. Did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. But in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it produced death in me through what was good. So that through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. That's what the law is for. It exposes the fact that this evil force is in every one of us. I don't know about you, but I had never, until article number 12, which I thought I would just like be finished with in a minute, because I was like, what can you say about the law? And now I'm finding out that the law it is 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 awesome. The law is what uh, is what points out to me what sin is, and, and sin is just waiting for the right circumstances in order to spring into action and overpower my will and, and take us into things and places we never dreamed we would find ourselves. I mean, who hasn't at one time or the other said, I never thought I'd be here. I never thought I'd do that. We've all had that confession. The great power of sin is that it deceives us. We think, I got this. And sin says, that's just where I want you. Oh, sin is waiting for the right situation to come together like that anthrax. It rises up from what appears to be nowhere. Just because you haven't done a particular sin does not mean you won't. You, you, we, we can't be guilty of saying, I would never do this or that because that's not the case. It, is, it only means that the right situation and the right circumstances has not come together. But for now, all things have come together for the end of this lesson. So come back again and join us as we continue to... It, at least for me, be amazed at the law and the gospel. Come back again. Until then, take care.